Okay, welcome everyone to the Coffee Microcaps virtual conference, the third in the Coffee Microcaps series, not the event I was planning. Um, I'm very disappointed we can't have the in-person conference in Sydney as planned, but uh, needs must. We've had to go the, the virtual route with everything that's happening with COVID-19. And I hope uh, all our viewers and friends and supporters of Coffee Microcaps are staying safe, well, and healthy. Um, the best place to find out about Coffee Microcaps is on our Twitter page. Twitter handle is C Microcaps, or if you search hashtag Coffee Microcaps, uh, you'll find out uh, what we're up to. And we've got some exciting things planned in the coming weeks slash months. Um, some new video and virtual content and our newsletter is finally going to be getting up and running. So keep an eye on Twitter for all of those new developments. So without further ado, I'll start um, a much, much, much shortened virtual conference, but hopefully we can be back to our usual setup. Um, at the end of October is when I'm planning the next in-person conference subject to COVID-19 issues and travel and health restrictions being lifted by the Australian government. Here is our compliance and disclaimer. I'd like to now introduce our keynote speaker, Ben Williamson from Fresh Equities. Ben is going to give us an overview of some of the queries, questions and themes that have been coming through to the Fresh Equities desk in relation to COVID-19 and how companies are going to deal with capital raisings over the next uh, six to 12 months. So here is Ben. Good afternoon. My name is Ben Williamson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Fresh Equities and welcome to a, a, a virtual installment of Coffee Microcaps. I, uh, <laughs> I think it's fair to say that this isn't how we all envisaged um, attending Coffee Microcaps. When Mark asked me to keynote this and open it, uh, you know, I was hoping to be in Sydney in a room with you all, but the world has changed and continues to change on a, on a daily basis. So, you know, I think it's, uh, it's great that we're still kicking it off. And, you know, however you're listening, thanks for tuning in. I uh, just quick background on, on Fresh to those that don't know us. So Fresh is a marketplace or a platform that allows you to get access to deals that you otherwise don't. So we kicked off just over a year ago and in that time we've helped hundreds of deals and it's over 475 now, nearly 500, raise tens of millions of dollars and give investors, um, more importantly, access to deals that they otherwise don't get. So it's a really simple process where people can follow companies, all ASX listed, they can sign up and, and bid live into their deals that are normally reserved for instos and insiders and um, get allocations in their normal trading account. And it's all free. Uh, to give some background on the types of deals, it's it's interesting. Microcaps is a uh, is a broad term for a lot. We've worked on deals all the way from Westpac down to um, RTOs and and the like. So there's been a, a broad range of of offerings, regardless of of what you're interested in, um, and across different sectors. So there's just a just a few of the nearly 500 deals, so it's been good. I'm a pretty interactive guy. I, when I, if, if we were there um, in person, I'd probably be walking around the stage and uh, trying to garner questions already from the audience. So I thought what I'd do to kick things off um, and to talk through this is, is send a few people an email and ask them what questions they'd, they'd like talked about, obviously. Everything is COVID-19 uh, related um, and it's, it's definitely a, a hot topic and, and something that, you know, said weeks before this 
we would never have thought that this would be the impact. So as I'm sure you're all aware, the uh, capital markets in Australia have been hugely impacted by C19 and continue to be impacted on a daily basis. Swings that are four or five percent every day are very common now. And you know, if that had happened six months ago, it would be very alarming. Uh, 35% is how much the ASX 200 is down uh, as I'm going through this. The micro caps that a lot of us follow have been hit a lot harder. In some cases, 70 or 80%. Uh, we're going to see some very tough calls by those businesses over the next few weeks and months as people look to conserve cash and make very important long-term business decisions. And I think importantly as well, we've seen the capital raise market completely dry up. So in February, there was a number of large deals that went through. Uh, there was about 500 to $800 million raised in a single week. And now we're seeing you know, maybe a couple of million a week. Uh, and it's usually done by insiders or people very close to the company that are very supportive of the company. So external investment has really died away to zero. So what are companies doing? If they can't get money, uh, the ones that are closer to cash flow, um, danger territory are really tightening their belts, they're cutting costs. We're seeing across the board, at the top end, a lot of companies that are getting the news headlines that are putting people into, um, you know, standing down employees or, or making cuts, you know, talking to some smaller companies, companies that employ 40 or 50 staff, we're hearing from them that they're either standing down or making cuts to 10 or 20% of their workforce already, uh, and that's just going to continue. Uh, I think that everyone is, is focused on the impacts, but also not wanting to make um, long-term negative decisions if this is going to be over shortly. And I think the every day we go on, it gets a higher and higher probability that this is not going to be a short term um, issue. It's going to go on for for definitely weeks and likely months, potentially the rest of the year, and almost needs to be thought of as this is the new norm. Importantly, uh, one of the questions that came through is what are investors or funds doing? And you know, everyone listening to this is an investor. Uh, so you're going to have a good view, if not better view on this than me. What we're hearing is that everyone's put their hands in their pockets uh, and they're keeping them there. So no one is willing to invest at the moment. And it's not necessarily that they don't see value. It is a fear of loss factor with regards to, you know, if this if this stock can drop by 10% in a day, uh, what could they drop by in the next three weeks? Am I getting in at the bottom or am I, you know, trying to catch a falling knife? And I think that's causing a lot of people to miss out on opportunities and it's causing some irrational behaviours. And I think we just need to make sure that we stay calm. Um, we definitely get things in order. So uh, I think a lot of investors are also freeing up some cash to get ready. But we just need to make sure that we assess each situation as it comes through. How will deal structure change? So when we talk about deal structure, there's typically three ways for a ASX listed stock to raise uh, equity. Uh, there's the share purchase plan, the rights issue, and a placement. I think that in a, in a time of high volatility, speed is everything. So 
placements are going to become more and more prevalent um, and they're going to be a, a quicker raise typically with a better incentive. So, you know, when we talk about discounts in placements, the reason that a discount exists is because you are trying to stimulate demand. If a, if a, a stock normally turns over $100,000 in, in shares a day on the market, on the ASX, and you want to raise $5 million, then you're trying to stimulate 50 times the level of demand in a day. And, and you're trying to raise that in a day. So in order to do that, you need to, everyone who's done entry uh, economics will tell you, you need to adjust the demand and supply curves. So typically you will drop the share price or introduce things like an option. Essentially, you need to stimulate demand more. So the way you do that is to adjust the curve even more. So it's either a higher discount or it's a, uh, I think options are going to come uh, in a bit more, especially listed options. If we, if we believe this is going to be a, a six to 12 month impact and you're giving people the option, uh, you know, a two or three year option that a month ago would have been in the money, that starts to get quite attractive, I think. So, and, and it's another way for the company to raise future equity. It's less dilutive. So we think that is going to be a, um, a big change. We also think that the market might start to look at various options. You know, we don't want to see death notes come in, but we do think that there are different ways for companies to raise capital whilst providing investors with downside protection. So, you know, as, as that happens and as investors come back into the market, um, that'd be a very positive outcome, we think. So this is the last question. Uh, how can you maximize returns? Now, I think there's, there's two or a couple of parts to this uh, question. One is you need to be ready. So, uh, you know, I think that having as much cash uh, that you can access is, is ideal. Opportunities are going to come through. We're starting to see them come through with Webjet and Omedia. We'll see more ASX 2300 stocks come through. We'll see more mid caps and small and micros. Um, there's, there's going to be a flurry of activity this year. And I think the best thing you can do is have as much cash available that you can access. The other thing is you just need to be ready. Like these deals, when they get done, are open and close in a couple of hours. So you need to make sure that, you know, if you've got brokers that they're all set up and ready to go and that they remember that you exist because some of the time it's about who are they going to call and you want to be top of mind. If you haven't already, uh, I say this, you know, not in jest at all, but you should sign up with Fresh. Uh, we provide a really important service to the market, which is to make sure that if your existing channels don't have access to it, you can get it through us uh, and there's, there's no downside to getting it through us. So, you know, go to freshequities.com, sign up and verify, get ready. Uh, and, and if you're a soft, especially make sure that your certificate's up to date. And if you need to get a new one, organize that now uh, so that you're set up. So really, uh, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it's, 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 even though it hasn't been uh, presenting in person, it's still been uh, a, a great opportunity to get out and talk to you guys. This is really an important part of, uh, of the capital market life and life cycle. So I think, you know, kudos to, to Mark and the team at Coffee for keeping this going, even in a digital format, because the, um, 
the need to listen to companies uh, is very, very important and the need to, for companies to communicate uh, is even more important now than it was a month ago. You know, we need to hear more often from more companies on what they're doing. You know, how are they going in this environment? How's their cash flow? What are they doing to mitigate downside? What are they doing to come out the end of this in a very strong position? So, I, you know, I really implore you to, to keep watching and, and listening to the companies as they come through. And, you know, thank you very much uh, for, for having me here. I do love feedback. As I said at the start, uh, if, I was, if I was there in person, uh, I'd be walking around the stage and, and asking you for questions. We, um, there I'm on the left. Uh, if those of you who know Alex, feel free to reach out to him as well. Um, but drop me an email, give me a call. I'd love to hear from you guys what you're seeing in the market, what opportunities you're seeing. Uh, if you agree or disagree with anything I've said, uh, I love to be challenged as well. But, you know, as I said, really make sure that you hang around, listen to the companies, hear where they're at, uh, and good luck investing. Cheers, guys. And secondly, I'd like to introduce Mr. Greg Timar, CEO of HDL Limited, who is going to give us an overview of the HDL business. Hello, my name is Greg Timar and I am the CEO of the HDL Group. I'm glad to have the opportunity to address you via a pre-recorded video presentation. Drawing on my background in corporate finance and most recently in private equity, I've recently taken on the role of CEO at HDL to build further on its foundations to create a strong and viable future. HDL is an active investment company which directly invests into unlisted small to medium sized businesses who possess a sustainable competitive advantage and strong growth prospects. We provide our portfolio of businesses equity capital and specialist business management skills to leverage these growth opportunities. HDL's core purpose is to create shareholder value through active ownership in our portfolio businesses, driving sustainable growth by a strong focus on customers and employees. HDL is one of the longest listed companies on the ASX and recently completed its 116th AGM. It draws on a rich entrepreneurial tradition of investment in various sectors. Through its history, HDL has been an incubator for a number of listed companies, including Hunter Hall Limited, now part of Pangana Capital, and Clearview. Since the 1980s, We've had a close association with two substantial families through our shareholder base who have brought their skills, experience, and support to the operations of the group. Since the two substantial shareholders have been involved, HDL has made 11 substantial investments in small cap listed companies, some of which included takeover offers, 13 private company acquisitions, and two incubations of future listed businesses. Today, HDL comprises investments in five portfolio companies. Three of these are 100% owned, being BLC, our beauty and wellness business, JSB, our lighting solutions business, and SPOS, our retail merchandising solutions business. In addition, we own 70% of Pegasus, our healthcare product solutions business, principally servicing those requiring disability related equipment. HDL's largest investment by value, though, is our 45% stake in the Mount Castle schoolwear, hatware, and corporate wear business. I will provide further detail in relation to each of these businesses shortly in this presentation. HDL today continues its long-term strategy to partner with owners and managers to maximise the value of businesses through bringing our equity and management skills to bear. Our focus in the near term is on realising the value in our current portfolio, particularly given the recent impacts that the coronavirus has meant not only for our businesses, but also for the wider economy. As of today, all our businesses continue operating, albeit in uncertain conditions. In uncertainty, though, there is opportunity. 
We are currently in the middle of a one for four rights issue that we announced at the end of January at 25 cents per share, which we have extended in the current climate now through to 7 April. This is partially underwritten by our two substantial shareholder groups to the extent of their 54% holding in HGL's equity base. Further information is available in the investor offer booklet available on the ASX website. In joining HGL, the board asked me to lead a strategic review of each of our businesses, which is ongoing. Our efforts revolve around improving sales productivity, including through people and systems initiatives, as well as securing relevant bolt-on brand and M&A opportunities. As with many businesses in the current circumstances, we continue to develop our plans for shoring up our balance sheet. What makes HGL worth considering for investment? As well as our equity and skills proposition, our current portfolio includes the following attributes. Businesses with solid reputations in their respective sectors, strong leadership and sector expertise, each operating in highly fragmented competitive settings, offering both brand and M&A bolt-on opportunities, potential for continuous improvement, and most importantly, strong operational leverage, being the high percentage flow through to the bottom line from incremental revenues. This explains our focus on finding and securing preferably already established brands or synergistic bolt-on business opportunities. The most recent case in point is BLC, securing the exclusive license for the hydropeptide brand in Australia for a modest investment in inventory and a new website. Also important is the supportive and long-term relationship we have with our bankers, ANZ. Our investment proposition is further enhanced by a large pool of tax losses of around $29 million, the majority of which are revenue in nature, as well as circa $9 million in franking credits. I would like now to provide you an introduction to each of our portfolio businesses. Starting with our beauty and wellness business, BLC, this operates as a house of brands. The largest of these by total sales is French brand Falgo, which is where the business commenced in Australia some 45 years ago. We continue to build the portfolio of complementary brands to provide a compelling proposition to our customers who traditionally have been spas, salons and clinics across Australia, and more recently also in New Zealand. In addition to this, we continue to build our online presence through direct websites for most of our brands, as well as supporting our select online partners. BLC has added four new premium brands last year and hydropeptide so far this year. We also continue to look at other licensing opportunities. JSB is largely a B2B business selling lighting packages to developers, builders and contractors, typically on larger commercial projects and remains a recognised distributor of a broad portfolio of architectural lighting solutions, both in Australia and New Zealand. Following the loss of a major brand licence in 2018, we have employed a new CEO with significant industry experience and continue to develop on our acquisition of the Intralux business. Intralux is our Australian design and manufactured lighting venture based in JSB's Brisbane facilities. It has been successful in gaining market share and now accounts for circa 20% of JSB's total sales. We believe Intralux has the potential to grow further and be an important anchor of this business. JSB have recently opened a contemporary new office in Sydney with a showroom area and have secured new attractive premises for an office and showroom in Melbourne, its two key markets. The focus this year for JSB will be building customer relationships, deepening and broadening its offer and continuing to build the sales pipeline. We also continue to explore brand and M&A opportunities for this business. SPOS, our retail merchandising business, enjoys an A-list client base including Coles, Woolworths and Aldi, in addition to various other well-known national retailers in both Australia and New Zealand. SPOS provides a broad range of products including high quality product fronting solutions such as roller shelves and push dispensers. Recently, SPOS has been successful in designing and delivering applications of this technology in new retail formats, 
including for dispensing pharmaceuticals and cigarettes. SPOS have also become leading providers in anti-theft systems through the development of various solutions to boost retailers' profits through reducing in-store theft. While SPOS services retailers, its business drivers are upgrades and new stores, as well as product innovation that improves customer profitability as opposed to underlying retail sales growth. Under the leadership of our CEO, SPOS has undertaken numerous brand and business acquisitions and has been historically a consistent performer. Work this year in SPOS will focus on driving sales productivity and adding new product opportunities to the offering. Acquired in 2018 and 70% owned by HGL, Pegasus has accumulated an estimated 40% share in the New South Wales public hospital market for alternating pressure mattresses used to manage and prevent bed sores. Pegasus are looking to replicate that success in other state markets. This has been built in parallel to its disability equipment solutions business. Pegasus enjoys good long-term tailwinds from the operation of the NDIS, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and the general ageing demographic of the population. Mattresses have been a growth business and Pegasus is reinvesting its cash flows for further growth. Success in the mattresses segment has been based on a combination of clinical excellence of its high quality products, a high touch service proposition, efficient IT delivery and a good value offer. Currently, trials are underway for mattresses in major new acute hospitals in both Sydney and Victoria, with a view to potentially securing new contracts. Pegasus is now in advanced negotiations on a small bolt-on acquisition. The group's largest investment, Mount Castle, remains as a joint venture between HGL and CEO James Baldwin, together with other minority interests. Schoolware has been achieving growth from the trend towards greater differentiation between schools, in part in the form of prominent branded uniforms. Mount Castle has mastered a profitable, quick turnaround, short run manufacturing process for both school formal wear and sports wear. Mount Castle, through its two overseas joint venture manufacturing facilities, controls a high quality, profitable, vertically integrated supply chain. At the end of last year, Mount Castle acquired Sydney based LW Reed. Established in 1922, LW Reed has, under the leadership of its CEO, become one of the leading distributors of schoolware in Australia. Each business is looking to continue to operate largely as they have, with integration occurring between Mount Castle and LWRE in relation to certain systems and processes. Each business will look to leverage the other strengths to drive sales and win new business. We are excited by progress in the now enlarged Mount Castle business and the opportunities this will provide to grow further in the sector. By way of further background on the rationale for the LW Reed acquisition, a number of considerations made LW Reed a compelling proposition for Mount Castle. LW Reed has a broader national sales footprint with a bias towards public primary schools. This complements well Mount Castle's smaller though deeper customer base with a bias towards private schools in Queensland and New South Wales. Now selling to over 30% of all schools in the country, LW Reed brings know-how on delivering timely and cost-effective product to school uniform shops through a sophisticated online and phone-based marketing platform with tech-driven fulfilment. While the acquisition of LW Reed was largely funded by debt, this was in circumstances that Mount Castle had little leverage. It provided an opportunity therefore to use debt well, while still leaving the merged business conservatively geared. LW Reed was able to be acquired at an attractive acquisition metric with a partly deferred settlement. The balance of purchase proceeds is to be funded by the ANZ, subject to meeting loan conditions at the time of payment. Brad as the CEO of LW Reed is aligned in the success of the broader business having taken a minority stake in the Mount Castle Group. Turning now to last year's trading performance, our merchandising business SPOS performed in line with historical results in 2019 
after 2018 benefited from a strong Australian dollar and some one-off adjustments. Our lighting solutions business, JSB, saw the full year impact of the loss of a major brand license arrangement. The rebuild of this business is underway and a significant focus during 2020. Our beauty and wellness business, BLC, saw its operating loss widen on the prior year. However, work is progressing on turning around this business with the benefit of scale from additional brands introduced last year and with hydropeptide added so far this year. 2019 was the first full year of Pegasus's earnings, the prior year representing HDL's half year of ownership. A fall in EBIT margin for this business was as a result of the growth in the rental-based mattress business and associated depreciation-related expenses. Mountcastle had the most pleasing result last financial year with revenue growth of almost 25% with an increase in EBIT margin. Over the next 12 months, we will be refining our views on each of the businesses through the strategic review process. We are satisfied that we have growth opportunities for each of our investments in normal operating conditions. As indicated earlier, we are now undertaking um, work to further strengthen our balance sheet through this period of uncertainty. I look forward to speaking with parties in the future. The balance of this presentation now provides bios on each of HDL's chair and its key executives, as well as my contact details. So you can stop at any point through the presentation if you wish to read on. So firstly, um, uh, the chair of HGL, the Honourable Helen Coonan, um, myself, Ian Thompson, HGL CFO, the CEO of BLC, Nikki Somerset, CEO of SPOS, Julian Pidcock, CEO of JSB, Anthony Berman, CEO of Pegasus, Scott Nowland, CEO of Mountcastle, James Baldwin, and CEO of LW Reed, Brad Orish. Here are my contact details and thank you for your attention. That concludes the Coffee Microcaps virtual conference. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and watching, and we're gonna be having a Zoom webinar with Greg from HGL in the coming days. So please stay tuned for that. It'll be announced on our Twitter feed and I'll be emailing it out to all the conference ticket holders and previous attendees. Uh, thank you once again for your support of Coffee Microcaps and hopefully we'll uh, be seeing each other all again in person in Sydney sometime soon. Thank you.